everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Strike from Universal Rackets, and in this video, we are going to be giving you three plays for you to try next time you are out on court. A lot of times when we're playing pickleball, we just know we have to serve the ball, return the ball, get it back over the net, and win the point. But if you go in with strategy and you have a play to run, you can win more points easily and more effectively for your team. So make sure to watch this video and save it to learn all these different strategies and plays for you to try next time you're on court. Should we get started? Yeah. So first off, we're going to show them the actual play, correct? Okay. So start. what's the first play that you want to go over? Let's start with one off the serve and I'll return to you. Okay. You explain it. So this right here is one of my favorite plays. This is a great play to use when you play with someone a little bit lower in level than you. It also is a great play when you want to utilize your forehand if you have a really good forehand. When I'm serving on this side, I want to get the third. I don't want my partner to get the third. Why? Because it's maybe their backhand. I know I have a really good forehand drive, forehand drop. So how can I ensure that I am most likely to get a forehand shot? How can I ensure that the next ball comes to me so I can either drive or drop the ball? How do I do it? This is it. I'm going to serve out wide. So once again, the first play that I'm going to do, if I want to get a forehand third, I am going to serve out wide. Now, how am I going to do that? Number one, I'm going to stand closer to the sideline. The reason why is because the further I get to the sideline, the more angle I can create. So I'm going to go to the sideline. I'm going to serve it. I'm going to try to pull them out wide. And then look, here we are. I have the third in the middle. For the returner, it's going to be extremely difficult and low percentage for him or her to hit down the line. Their natural tendency is going to be cross court or in the middle. Even if they go cross court, I can move around and hit my forehand. If they choose to go in the middle, here I have my forehand. If they choose to go down the line, once again, it is low percentage. Let's do one more. Okay, and I was gonna say too, when I got that backhand return and you went back up the middle here, that's gonna go to my partner's backhand, which could also generate more advantage to you as well. Yes. And then I'm gonna go here. Let's do it one more. Try to get more slice. The slower I hit, the more it bites. There we are. And now, okay, there we are. The key for this play is to follow your own play is for you to understand that the, it, the play is first serve out wide, next go up the middle. This gives you an extra step ahead from your opponents because I can bet you if you're not playing in a high level tournament, they don't have, they're not running a play, they're just playing pickleball. So this is gonna give you a huge edge on your next match. And if you guys can use certain plays to go by, you guys are gonna be able to focus on certain things and execute more during point plays rather than just playing every point hoping that things go right or wrong. And it's good if you have a natural instinct, like being an athlete from any other sport, you have a natural athletic instinct and court positioning, but to know that you're going out there with an intention of a play to run, you see someone who has a weak backhand, start attacking that out wide serve and then go up the middle and see how many points you win off of that. Yeah, now I wanna talk about not only myself, but my partner. So pretend you're my partner, okay? If you're my partner and I'm going for this out wide serve, a great thing, we're playing pickleball right now, we're in tournament, Michelle, I'm gonna go for the out wide serve. Mm -hmm. What should you do? Should you stand over here or should you come over here? I should come over here. Over here, because you always wanna follow your partner. So watch, right? If I go on my out wide serve here, mm -hmm. here we are, and now they hit to Michelle, where's Michelle going to have? Look, she's gonna have the forehand over here. Keep yeah. that here. Now, if they go to me in the middle or here, what do I have? I have my forehand. Angle creates angle. So the more out wide I stand, the more angle I can hit. Also, like I said before, that one where I made a mistake and I hit a backhand, if I stand over here, now if she hits the ball in the middle, look, I have my forehand over here rather than if I go in the middle and now I have my backhand. Like Michelle said, a backhand shot is more difficult to hit. 90%, 80% of pickleball players prefer their forehands over their backhands. So not only it targets their backhand, it pulls them out wide, and it gives you a huge target in the middle. A target to my partner's backhand, because if I'm all the way out here, my partner will have to take that next shot if it's done properly, and that's going to their backhand, which can also generate another pop-up for you to put the ball away. And also, eight out of 10 beginner, intermediate, recreational players, they're going to take the return like this. If you haven't watched our how to return video, 
if you pull me out wide on my serve, they're going to go like this. Now, their next ball, they're working on going out wide so much that now their next ball, they're going to be shallow or deeper into the court. Instead of when you get higher level, players will take that uh, out wide serve and they'll take the angle and then they'll move up. Mm -hmm. But most recreational players are gonna get pulled out wide that it's going to keep them back because they don't know how to cut the angle. So if you can attack their backhand, you are number one, able to maybe generate a pop-up like he did. Now, if he's able to defend that backhand well, because most people are expecting the ball to go to the middle of the court and it does bounce in the kitchen, I would hit a speed up at him to catch him more off guard and attack the other team aggressively. And for me, as a player moving up, you number one, pull me out wide here. I'm still moving forward because nine times out of 10, I'm gonna block this ball back or try to hit pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna reset it unless I'm higher level. So I'm moving over here, getting this ball, and you're, I can't move back. Right, so that's option number one. If you can get them moving up and their backhand is not beautiful, just put the ball away. If they're able to reset it, then I would go for the speed up. Even if I do get my hands on the next ball, I'm still moving. I'm not set in a good position. Yeah, when I play against you in skinny singles, that's like my number one thing to do to you is to find you moving because that's your biggest weakness, at least when you and I play against each other. Here we are. So drop. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. drop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're looking for a high volley to my forehand. I'm attacking his backhand in transition. Then say he hits a bad reset. We're putting the ball away. But if he can hit a good reset, I'm still attacking with a speed up. Here we are. Hit your reset here. Like when I go to your backhand, try to reset in the kitchen so I can show them the speed up. Okay. Because you're going to be applying so much pressure here that it's going to make them get frustrated. And then the next point, you're already one step ahead. I felt this firsthand. Okay, so the next play is when you're already at the kitchen. So the first one we went over was the serve, but this is when we're, uh, we've transitioned up already and we're at the kitchen. So we're also going to talk about targeting backhand here because, like we said, 90% of people, it's their weakness. I would even venture to say more than 90 because I feel like most people are right hand dominant. But if I, can, if I am getting like a third shot drop is coming at me and it's not a perfect drop. So it's a volley that I can take out of the air with my forehand here. I love to go to the person in front of me's backhand. So sometimes, Tyler, you wanna go to the other side? Yeah. So this is called the backhand attack and speed up. So you're hitting a third shot. So hit me a third. There we go. So the first shot goes to his backhand. If he's able to reset that, then we're still applying pressure with a speed up because 10 out of 10 times, he's already flustered from having to deal with that backhand over there. He's not gonna be prepared for a speed up. So that's play number two. Third, third play. So the third play I personally like to do when we're in an out wide dinking rally, you are going to go into the middle of the court after you go cross court once or twice. This is going to cause confusion. This is going to potentially cause a pop-up and an opportunity to take the ball out of the air. This is a great shot too, because you're the person that wants to take the first opportunity or get the first aggressive shot. I don't wanna wait until they do it to my partner or mm -hmm. myself. I wanna be the aggressor. I don't wanna be the person that's waiting. Yeah. So it's gonna kinda of look like, we're gonna go back and forth thinking, and we're just going cross court, right? cross court and then I'm going to hit a dink into the middle. Okay. The reason why is because number one, I'll you're not going to be able here. to hit it. You're going cross court with me. Mm -hmm. This person, they're going to be wanting to cover line, right? Because if we're in a super big cross court rally right now, they have to cover line because I could easily go like this right at them. So this is going to catch them off guard. They're going to be leaning in hitting the ball at a lower spot, and they're going to potentially pop the ball up in the air. Also, if they have any type of pickleball knowledge when they're playing, you move with your partner, but you also follow the ball. So like he said, um, an intelligent pickleball player will be covering the line when the ball goes cross court, 
and the likelihood of me coming back over here from out wide. So they're expecting that middle dink, but now it opens up and creates an opportunity to execute a good speed up. So it not only is another strategy to help you get out of those super long dinking rallies, maybe you know that uh, your opponent's better than you or more consistent than you at dinks, you can get out this way, but it's also going to start to open up the target for a speed up. Now, on this side, if you're playing a right-handed player, you have to be careful and you have to make sure that this ball stays low because what's gonna happen is if I pop this dink up a little bit, you can shift over and boom, put it away. Mm -hmm. So I need to, again, make sure I keep that middle dink low. Here we are, I'm going at our backhand. Now I'm gonna go in the middle and now look, I can create an opportunity. Same exact thing. I can go cross court, cross court, cross court. They're going to follow their partner that it's going to create a target for their speed up. Now, if you're playing a right-handed player, this is a great or more higher effective shot because if you speed the ball up in the middle, what's gonna happen, it's going to be the righty's backhand. Mm -hmm. So you can do it on both ways. Just make sure if you're playing righty, if you're dinking to the right side, you don't pop it up because again, the righty can slide over and hit a forehand. Now let's get into this drill. You ready? Yeah. Can you remember all the plays? No. Let's, let's put them on the screen. Can we do that? No. We'll put them in the description below. Play number one, out wide serve, and then the return of that for the third is gonna be a drive up the middle. Play number two is going to be any volley you get on your forehand needs to go to their backhand. And then if they do reset in the kitchen, you're gonna speed it up or take it as a volley to attack them. And then the third play is two out wide dinks then the third dink needs to go into the middle. And if you get a dead dink or an attackable ball back, you're going to speed it up and start the firefight. So let's see All how right. this looks for us. Play. <laughs> okay, so I have the backhand, it still works. That was out. I'm going to serve out wide, expect a middle ball. Now my partner is going to move over here as well, right? So I'm gonna tell them, hey, we're gonna serve out wide. Let's just play, serve out wide. Here we are, now boom, drive. Let's which I literally never do this play ever. And I have to hit a third shot drive, which I rarely do too. So And I have a good backhand. Here we go. Oh. Whoa! Who is she? I did that actually the other day and my I was like, oh my god, you have to ask Chris. I was like, I don't ever drive the ball, and Tyler would have been so proud of that shot. Because <laughs> it went right up the middle. <clears throat> One dink, two I'm dinks, go the three dinks. I opened you to the middle. I got you scrambling. Here we are. So now we're going to play straight ahead to show you the second play. So the first and third you can use when you're going cross court, when you're going straight ahead. You do the second. Here we are. So I'm going to serve it. <laughs> it worked. Coming. <laughs> yeah. So if you are on the receiving end of this play, you just have to know, like you said, it's coming. I have to be ready and wherever I am, keep my body set and make contact down front. And it's good because it forces you to work or hit on a your high speed up. Or, or good enough drop. <laughs> oh shit. Yes! <laughs> good. This is all you do to me all day. You just run this play on me. So I have to hit a good drop. Nope, too high my back in. Got lucky. <laughs> Maybe I gotta keep it to our back end. Or drive. And the good thing on my side is I'm forced to be aggressive and hit all these speed ups. So that when you're in the game you can be controlled and reset, but you know how to go for the speed up when you see it. Yeah, hundred percent. Woo! 
go. <laughs> so that's really difficult to handle. I have to hit a really good serve, really good drop, and it puts pressure on me because it makes me feel like I can't do anything. I'm just putting you on defense and I'm staying aggressive, which I feel like is not the natural instinct of your typical pickleball player walking onto this court. It's usually like, don't miss it. Don't hit it out. Get your serve in Wait yeah. for a pop-up. By magically a pop-up appears, you have to generate it to become a better player. Yeah. And you know, the first thing is, is have a play to run. Think yeah. about what you're going to do. When's the last time you did that? You ran a play in pickleball. I don't run plays. There we go. And you're yeah. a great player. Imagine how much better you could be. Yeah, and think, because during competition and everything, we did a video of what to do before your first tournament. I did a video on it. Yeah. I said, like, have a strategy, because when you're playing, especially in competition, no matter how much you drill, you're going to be thinking 15,000 gajillion things. There's going to be nerves, there's going to be stress, there's going to be all these different types of things. So if you could have a set plan to just focus on and run that plan throughout the match, it's going to put you in the best position to win and have fun. I think in my tournament experience, the best way to win a match is to make your opponents beat themselves. Get in their heads, frustrate them, find their weakness and attack it, and then you capitalize on it. Then you have to do less work. Yeah. You're playing smarter, not harder. And there's a thing between getting beaten and beating yourself. If you get beaten, you try your best, you do the best that you can, and they're just better than you that day. Right. If you beat yourselves, you try to go too much, everything. You know, even in our tournaments, like if we had a strategy, because what happens, like in our past tournaments, I would try to dictate, I would try to do all these crazy too tennis much. things. When things go wrong, I try to do too much and then I end up like self-destructing. Like overcompensating. So if we had a plan, I'm going to use this video for us next time. Yeah. We play a tournament. It would help me a ton because I try to start hitting all these crazy shots, which just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Having a plan will put you in the best position to not beat yourself and again, break down your opponents. And stay structured. So if you guys like this video, make sure to share with a friend. Don't share this to your pickleball opponents because they will be much better off in tournaments and in play. Make sure to click the link in the description. Check out all of our amazing Selkirk gear. It's our code ADV-Universal as of now. Um, and yeah, have a good one. Happy hitting. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on court. That was a high quality video.